requires some treatments only a few minutes while others are like half a day. Kids are naturally curious. We ask a lot of questions. But it helps us learn. I'm Riley. My name is Nicole Hammond and I am the clinical supervisor for the oncology program. And today we're going to talk about cancer and its treatment and how to best support someone with cancer. So today we're going to talk about cancer and uh, how we find out someone might have cancer and its treatment and how you can best support someone with cancer. Do you know what causes cancer? No. So your body is made up of billions and billions of cells and those, those are normal cells and they all have a job. Sometimes those cells kind of forget what their normal job is supposed to do for one reason or another and they become cancer cells. And those cancer cells are, they grow really, really fast and they try and make more cancer cells. And when you get a group of those cells, that's when you get like a tumor that can form. How do you treat cancer? So there's a lot of different options um, for treating cancer. Uh, it depends on you know what type of cancer it may be and, and where it's at. Usually you have to do a lot of tests to figure out exactly what type of cancer we're dealing with. And it's important for you to you know, know your body and what's normal for your body. And when you notice something that changes and it doesn't go away or it gets worse, you need to go see your doctor. So there is a lab that you can know that you have cancer or not? Sometimes. It depends on what it is. We can draw some blood, and uh, but most often in order to know that you have cancer, we have to have what we call a tissue sample. So we have to do like a biopsy. And sometimes if it's cancer of the blood, we can do, you know, blood tests and then we can um, get samples of uh, the inside of your bones, which is called the marrow. And we look at that and we look for how many normal cells there are compared to cancer cells. But most often we need a tissue sample. So like for breast cancer, we might have to you know, use a needle to pull out some of that tissue and then look at it under a microscope and look at those cells and figure out exactly what type of cancer we're dealing with. And then you have to do a lot of images, like diagnostic imaging, like those CTs and MRIs, and, and look at the rest of the body to see if the cancer is just in one spot or if it's spread to other areas of your body. Some patients, they do very well and we can get rid of their cancer. Others, we, we can control it and they learn to live with their cancer for many years and some we can't always get rid of it. So is there a way to sustain their life if you know that they're very weak? Yeah, we, you know, with the treatments, um, even if it's a cancer that we, we know we can't get rid of, maybe we didn't catch it early enough. You know, there's a lot that we can do to keep ourselves healthy and to see our doctor and different screenings, but sometimes we don't have any symptoms and so we catch the cancer really late after it's been able to grow and, and spread throughout your body. And those, those times sometimes we can't get rid of it. So then we focus on making sure that you're comfortable and that the cancer is not causing you any pain or making you feel really sick. And sometimes we give treatments like chemotherapy or radiation to make you comfortable. How does radiation help? We can target the radioactive rays. We have the machines that have those rays that destroy those cancer cells so they can't, you know, grow and make new cells. And then that helps shrink the tumor, you know, to relieve any symptoms they may have. I thought that radioactivity and stuff was like poison for your body and stuff. It can be, you know, it, it destroys those cancer cells and, and sometimes it can affect your normal cells around that area that we're radiating. And chemotherapy can do the same thing, you know, chemo, do you know what that is? Mm -mm. So chemotherapy is drugs that we may give someone in an IV. Those drugs go throughout your whole entire body 
and it can target those cancer cells, but it also can affect other cells in your body that are growing and reproducing and making new cells really fast. Can you think of some of the cells in your body that might have to make new cells a whole bunch? Your blood cells? Yeah, your blood cells and, and your skin that's exposed you know, to the environment. And even your hair, does your hair sometimes fall out when you brush your hair? Mm -hmm. So the, your, your body has to constantly make new cells so you can grow more hair. Well, those cells are also affected by the chemotherapy. So that's why sometimes when you see someone with cancer, they may or they may not have any hair, and that's from their treatment. So if you have cancer, do you have to stay in the hospital, or can you go back home and do your regular everyday life? That's a really good question, you know, and it, it depends sometimes on what type of cancer you have and what treatments that you have to have. Most often, we're able to treat someone's cancer um, what we call on an outpatient basis. So they don't have to be admitted to the hospital all the time. They can come to uh, see their doctor and, and then they can come if they're on chemotherapy, they can come to our infusion center um, with our nurses that give their chemotherapy. Sometimes you're there for uh, just a few minutes and other times it can be, you know, half of the day or part of the day, a few hours and then go back home. How can you find out if you have cancer or like how uh, you can get cancer? You know, there's, we want to st stay away from uh, smoking or chewing tobacco, you know, drinking alcohol. Some of those are habits that are not healthy for our bodies. Um, so really trying to be as healthy as you can with, with what you're eating and putting in your body and, and your activity level. Um, and then it's important we have a lot of different screenings. So we talked about really knowing your body and what's normal for you. And um, like with breast cancer, if uh, you feel like a lump in your chest that doesn't go away, you would want to go see your doctor and have them you know, look at that a, a little bit closer. How do you feel that you might support someone if you had a friend at school or or a family member that, that had cancer? Just try to keep them cheered up all the time. and Just be a really good friend to them because they could be really down about what they have. So you could always just try to cheer them up. Yeah, it's important to, you know, probably the number one thing that you could do is to be a great listener. Sometimes, you know, it, even when you're having a bad day, you just want to talk to someone about how you're feeling. and. If you're talking with someone you know, that has cancer, there's good days and there's bad days. And when it's a good day, it's great to be happy and you know, cheerful right along with them. But if they're really having a bad day and you know, they're sad or, or you know, angry that this, is, that this has happened to them, it's important for you to support those feelings that they're having. And you can say things like, you know, I don't, I don't even really know what to say, but I just want you to know that I care about you. Um, and just, you don't always have to have an answer. Sometimes just listening to them is, is the best support that you can ever give someone. Well, Riley, thank you for being with me today and, and talking about cancer. And it's an important topic for us to be able to, you know, share our feelings and, and ask questions and learn more about. Well, thank you for letting me talk to you. Yeah.